Lord Garmadon is, um, he's a bad guy. Um, and he's sort of the penultimate narcissistic bad guy who is just always trying to sort of rule over and enslave uh, Ninjago. And, uh, and sort of basically, it's like, it's the classic bad guy trope of he just wants to own whatever city he's attacking and be dictator of it. And on a personal note, he's highly narcissistic, um, sees the world sort of through everyone else's eyes, how they see him. He's kind of that guy who would be, you know, enough about me, but what do you think of me? You know, like he's, um, uh, he's just, and, and he's also sort of, I think, emotionally stunted. He's probably about 16 in his head. Um, and he also, uh, also has a very tortured relationship with his son. He blames his son for him leaving him. Meaning, he blames his son for the reason, being the reason he had to abandon his son. <laughs> so it's sort of a funny um, sort of uh, dynamic. <laughs> Obviously, Lloyd's on his own journey to sort of, you know, find himself, find it, you know, have the courage to sort of face his father, um, which is one element. But, um, you know, like all good teams, you know, he has to operate within a, within a group. Um, so the ninjas, you know, there's several points in the film, you know, where things can feel disparate or when gamardon has got the upper hand. Um, but they find, you know, under the tutelage of, you know, Master Wu, um, that, you know, the more they work together, uh, the, uh, you know, the more, the, the more successful they'll be as a, as a group. Um, and Garmadon does not learn that lesson. He, uh, he suffers from, uh, I can do it all myself, and why isn't anyone helping me? I didn't know anything about the franchise, and then um, I was actually at a friend's house, and they had a child, and, um, and I was, we were just talking, and the, the mother just immediately brightened up. She was like, you're gonna do the Ninjago movie? Oh no, you're gonna be, and you know, the hero to my son who, uh, who loves these things. And then she's like, he can tell you all about them. So then I went up into his room, and he told me all, like just spelled the whole world out. He had books, he had characters and everything. But it's like, it was like a subculture. It was like a great old indie band you hadn't heard about, but that only six-year-olds know about. Um, so like, uh, he basically just sort of walked me through it. Then I, of course, talked to Charlie Bean, and, and um, and he sort of filled me in and showed me all the visuals and you know the kind of world that they were going to be in and interacting in and um, you know what they were going to kind of try and do differently from you know some of the previous Lego movies. Um, yeah, and it's a bad guy, so I loved I loved you know sort of playing that guy. Anytime you get to play a big broad villain, I think it's a lot of fun. The beauty of it is you can kind of just riff. You know, it's that it's that thing where you can you can just constantly be. Um, you know, it's it's sort of disposable. You know, you you're you're there for hours and hours and hours, just sort of doing lines. So you can try out different stuff, and it's nothing's too precious early on. You know, once they start to animate it later on, you have to start locking in, you know, more specific things. But um, but the, I think the beauty of at least voicing a character in a in an animated movie is um, you know, you you can play forever. You know, and everything's possible. I remember when I first heard that the Legos were going to be made into a movie, and I remember thinking, they're so, they're, they're bricks, so how are they going to sort of animate them in a way that makes them look, you know, sort of, we're so used to sort of in other animated movies, you know, things sort of being so seamless and sort of computer generated. Um, and I really love the way they just sort of just embrace the fact that they move like this, you know, and sort of walk like that. Um, so I think that's kind of what was the appeal of that movie. I mean, aside from brilliant writing, directing, and all the rest of it, but. Um, but I was blown away by the way, the, sort of the hyper-real, I like that they embraced the hyper-realism of the, the Lego brick.